How to lead a successful case-based discussion. Okay, so you've been preparing a few cases, mm -hmm. um, it being near the end of your training, and the whole idea being to give you the opportunity to demonstrate excellence with some of what you have been doing. Um, how would you like us to decide on which of these cases we do? What, 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 tell me a bit shall I, Yeah, shall I tell you a little bit about each yeah. one? So yeah. um, um, I've got a couple of perhaps slightly more straightforward cases. Which Before you start your CBD, you should ask the trainee to select a handful of cases, perhaps three or four, um, give you a brief summary, ideally a week before, um, and perhaps with a little note about which competencies out of the 12 RCGP competencies they feel each case um, displays. I usually try and uh, cover between two and four competencies per CBD, otherwise it gets quite unwieldy. Um, normally the trainer will select two of these cases. Uh, if you don't have time to do two, then, then just one. One is a 31-year-old um, lady with some new neurological symptoms. Um, and so it's quite a lot based around kind of data gathering and, and potential diagnosis and, and referral. Um, I've got another case which is um, a 40 year old gentleman related to sort of health anxiety, um, really quite severe anxiety symptoms. It's worth keeping an eye on which competencies have been covered so far and where there are, are glaring gaps or omissions um, and perhaps asking the trainee to choose cases which demonstrate some of the competencies which haven't been shown so far. And which competencies would you say the 31-year-old lady? Um, the first, the lady. first case, I mean, I think it's, it's very much about um, data gathering um, and, and making a decision and appropriate management in, time, in terms of referral. But there's also, uh, you know, it's, it's a potentially quite a devastating diagnosis. Okay. And so there was that issue as well. Also choosing cases uh, from a wide variety of backgrounds, so perhaps a home visit, an, a, an emergency clinic, um, a child, uh, someone who's elderly, someone with cancer, palliative care patient. I'd never met her before. She came to see me in a routine appointment um, with um, a history of some slightly odd neurological symptoms. So the case-based discussion itself is a summative tool, um, so you shouldn't give feedback during the actual interview. What you're trying to elicit is what actually happened. Did the, the candidate demonstrate competencies? She felt that she was more clumsy than usual as well, she, especially on her legs, so a little bit unsteady, um, and was having to make sure that she was being much more careful. So it's not about what if, uh, what would you have done if something had been different. It's all about what did you actually do in these circumstances. So having a, a list of the descriptors of each competency is helpful. Again, tailoring the CBD to particular competences so you can ask specifically about those areas. Most teaching sessions are uh, learner-led. So you know, the learner will come to you with some questions, some unmet needs, and you try um, and together address them or find out how the learner might be able to address them themselves. A case-based discussion is not quite like that. It's a summative assessment as part of the workplace-based assessment. So you're really looking at whether within the, the case that the learner presents, whether they've managed to demonstrate any of the, the competencies required um, in terms of being a GP. Of the competencies, CBDs are designed to uh, demonstrate 10 out of the 12. They aren't used to demonstrate communication skills. Um, and they're not used to demonstrate competency 10, which is about maintaining performance. Of the others, I mean, to give you an example, uh, managing medical complexity. So you might want to ask your trainee how they took into account the patient's chronic comorbidities when dealing with the acute problem. Did they consider the impact of these at the time? If there were areas of uncertainty, which you'd expect if it was a, a complex case, how did this make the trainee feel? How did they cope with it? Uh, what were their, their strategies? In terms of referrals, if there was a referral made, was this, at, was this the trainee who was instigating it or was it the patient? And if it was a patient, how did that make the, the trainee feel? Well, in a sense, you provided the appropriate mm. support here mm. and did recognise your limitations mm. to intervene. A case-based discussion usually takes about 20 minutes for the actual interview and then with 10 minutes or so for feedback at the end. What you're trying to explore is what the learner actually did in that setting with that patient um, and using it to make a summative judgement about the, the competencies. 
after the summative part is over, so you've explored their clinical reasoning um, through the competencies, after that interview is over, you should go on to give feedback and then it is learner-led, so you can explore um, points about which they weren't certain. You can structure it like you would structure a normal tutorial um, and you can give feedback and, and you know, help learning so it, it can become formative after the interview is over. Here are some questions that are intended to get you thinking about this method of assessment in greater depth. What are the limitations of case-based discussion? And to what extent can a case-based discussion promote learning? There's further discussion of this subject in our e-learning module on workplace-based assessment. Go to faculty.londondeanery.ac.uk forward slash e-learning and select the topic from the left-hand panel. If you're a student on our postgraduate certificate course, you'll find references and suggestions for additional reading within the online resource folder.